The history of Benedict College is an extraordinary story about ordinary people using their gifts to write an epic account of faith, courage, leadership, service, and relentless perseverance. When the void in educational opportunities for recently freed African Americans in Columbia, South Carolina needed to be filled, it was a woman, Bathsheba A. Benedict, who stepped up led the way and founded Benedict College on December 5, 1870. An anti-slavery activist from Rhode Island, Bathsheba A. Benedict purchased an 80-acre abandoned slave plantation on which to build a school for freed people. Administered by the American Baptist Home Mission Society, the school was given the name Benedict Institute. From these humble beginnings, Benedict Institute set out to prepare newly freed and freeborn men and women to be powers for good in society and to train the next generation of teachers and preachers in South Carolina. Benedict Institute opened its doors to 10 students, but eventually welcomed 39 in its first year, including the Reverend Samuel Johnson, a 65-year-old pastor of the First Baptist Church in Columbia. Mrs. Benedict believed that both the education of the mind and the nurturing of the spirit were the greatest tools for a successful life. Benedict's student body grew, and the curriculum during its first 25 years continued to expand to include the traditional college disciplines and an industrial department offering carpentry, shoemaking, printing, and painting. On November 2nd, 1894, the institution was chartered as a liberal arts college by the South Carolina State Legislature, and Benedict Institute became Benedict College. From the beginning, Benedict College responded to the needs of its students, offering college preparatory courses, providing night classes, and granting high school diplomas. It also served its community, the state of South Carolina and beyond, sending educated teachers, ministers, and other graduates out into the world to lift the voices of generations of Americans. Benedict College was a beacon for African Americans in Columbia. Each year on January 1st, large crowds joined students to celebrate Emancipation Day, and on March 19th, annual celebrations honored the legacy of Bathsheba A. Benedict for Founders Day. Faith and fellowship brought African-American Baptist ministers of South Carolina to campus most years for their annual convention, as many of them were alumni. In 1900, the first black woman doctor in South Carolina, Dr. Matilda Arabella Evans helped establish a training school for nurses at Benedict and a small hospital was built on the campus in 1914. A few years later, when World War I ended, black soldiers, among them Benedict graduates and students whose education was interrupted by war, returned to Fort Jackson, but their parade ended in a homecoming ceremony at Benedict College. Sports were not viewed favorably by administrators during Benedict's formative years. In the 1888 college catalog, they were dismissed as a most wicked waste of time. It was not until 1911 that Benedict College established a football team led by Ralph F. Bates, a white professor minister who served as both player and coach during the team's first two years. In 1920, the football team was undefeated and for the next three seasons, no team scored against them. Benedict football drew in thousands of fans, particularly the Turkey Day games that matched the home team against neighboring rival Allen University. The college chose purple and gold as its official colors and the Deacon became the mascot. Though later, in 1938, students voted to change the mascot to the Tiger. Sixty years passed before Benedict College inaugurated its first African-American president, but finally, in 1930, Benedict College alumnus and former president of nearby Morris College, John Jacob Starks, took the helm. After a succession of northern white presidents sponsored by the American Baptist Home Mission Society, Dr. Starks represented a new era of independence for the college and immediately set a course for expansion and change. 
He introduced a Bachelor of Science degree in pre-medicine and deepened the collaboration between Benedict and its neighbor Allen University, sharing a summer school, course offerings, and a library. A new chapel was erected in 1932 and dedicated to Reverend Clarence N. Tisdale, the last white president of the college. And in 1937, Starks built a new library dedicated to his wife. The student body grew, as did demands for equality. That same year, Benedict students founded their own branch of the NAACP and participated in the National Anti-Lynching March. Two years later, activists from across the state met in the new Starks Library on campus and founded the South Carolina NAACP State Conference of Branches. In 1942, Septima Clark graduated from Benedict College. Afterwards, Clark was fired as a school teacher in Charleston, South Carolina for refusing to relinquish her membership in the NAACP. She subsequently took a position at Tennessee's Highlander Folk School where she mentored Rosa Parks and Martin Luther King Jr. Later, she won equal pay for black teachers in Charleston and developed citizenship schools for the Southern Christian Leadership Conference. In the wake of World War II, Benedict students and alumni stood tall among the leaders in civil rights activism in Columbia. In 1946, Benedict students, along with alumna and activist Majeska Monteith Simpkins, hosted the Southern Negro Youth Congress meeting, featuring W.E.B. Du Bois, who delivered his keynote address, Behold the Land, in Antisdale Chapel. He famously told students, Here, is the chance for young women and young men of devotion to lift again the banner of humanity and to walk toward a civilization which will be free and intelligent, which will be healthy and unafraid, and build in the world a culture led by black folk and joined by peoples of colors and all races without poverty, ignorance, and disease. A few years later, Majeska Simpkins helped draft the petition that launched Briggs Elliott, the first of five school desegregation cases that became Brown versus Board of Education in 1954. Starting in 1960, Benedict and Allen students led the way in challenging segregation in Columbia, staging sit-ins, marches, and protests. The fruits of the civil rights movement opened new opportunities for Benedict students and alumni to shape America's future. Benedict graduate attorney I.S. Levy Johnson was the first African American in South Carolina since Reconstruction to be elected to the state legislature and, in 1970, the first African American elected president of the National Bar Association. Benedict alumna Alma W. Byrd served as the Democratic member of the South Carolina House of Representatives from 1991 to 1998. Dr. Listervelt Middleton became internationally known Afrocentric writer, scholar, journalist, and award-winning producer of SCE TV's For the People which served as both a platform and pulpit from which scholars of African and African-American history could reach their prospective audiences. Beyond politicians and pundits, Benedict alumni contributed to other sectors of public life, including professional sports. The Tigers excelled at all sports, particularly basketball. The Cincinnati Royals drafted Robert McCullough then a senior and the second leading scorer in the nation in 1965. Dr. Leroy Walker, who started his career in track and field as a student at Benedict, is now an international icon in the world of sports, having served as president of the Olympics Committee in 1996, the first African American to hold that position. He presented to the viewing public African scholars many have come to know and revere. Indeed, Benedict College's history has been written on its campus, in its buildings, and in its pursuits in the community, but most importantly, by the minds and hearts of its graduates, who have excelled in every area of human endeavor all over the world. 
This celebration is made possible today because we stand upon the shoulders of countless Benedict College men and women who have sustained the institution during its good and challenging times, during times of war and peace, during periods of segregation and integration, during times when students wore three-piece suits and when they wore blue jeans and t-shirts, when the Afro hairstyle was popular and when jerry curls were all the rage, during the times that composition notebooks and ink pens were required classroom supplies and during the times when today's students use cell phones, PCs and iPads as necessities of life. Whatever the challenge or the circumstances, Benedict College has stood tall for more than 150 years and answered the questions, met the challenges, and sent more than 18,000 of her graduates back to their families, back to their communities, and around the world to be transformative agents in the places where the golden sunshine falls. As the college moves forward under the leadership of Dr. Rosalind Clark Artis, the entire Benedict College family is asked to achieve more. Dream more, give more, learn more, study more, and strive evermore to represent the best of BC.